Well, I think for me, it always starts with actually um, utilization of new devices, new technologies, new applications myself. So I'm, I've always been somewhat of a hands-on learner. It's okay to start reading about the space and following what people are saying and listen to different points of view. But for me, it's always been um, something that's complemented with going hands-on myself. So becoming a bit of an early adopter, not because I'm an, um, an innovator in technology necessarily, but more because I find that if I'm using Snapchat, if I'm using um, you know, whatever the latest social platform and technology might be of the moment, it allows me to start to develop a stronger point of view of how does that start to equate to usage and application within my own business context and space. And then what has to start shifting in terms of the way we think about things and the way we understand behavior? Um, how is my own behavior shifting because of what I'm doing? So it could even be little things like um, as e-commerce became more and more prevalent, what were my interesting e-commerce sites that I tend to like more than others? You know, why am I gravitating to those sites? What's interesting about them? How are they upping their game? How are they shifting how I, my set of expectations for physical shopping and for um, any kind of commerce experience that I might have? Um, so then I start to take that th that set of knowledge and that learning and, and sort of deconstruct it and and analyze it myself to say, okay, what about all that that just took place? Can I now use as the, my you know, sort of toolbox or the, my approach to how I start thinking about how this is going to have to happen in the organization? Um, and take sort of the same kind of technology problem and challenge of introducing new technologies and new platforms. And then I think to myself, okay, what is it that each individual is going to have to start doing in order to get more and more comfortable and more effective in this space? Um, and so it's got to move beyond conceptual into the hands-on arena of playing with things and understanding things and personalizing them and putting yourself in kind of the user experience to start to adjust. So in the early days of new sites that were coming out, they were pure plays. They were retailers that had never come, you'd never met them before in the physical world, um, but you were meeting them for the first time in the online world. Uh, it was interesting to see how they were behaving differently than any commerce that you'd experienced before. So for example, Net-A-Porter is one of my favorite and um, weaknesses. <laughs> uh, and so one of the things I was discovering there was the way that they could surprise and delight and service a consumer was completely different than what you'd expect in, the, in a more physical retail environment. The way that they could always dish up for you every morning in your stream what was new, um, what was based on past um, purchase behavior, what would be most interesting to you, what might look great on you, um, constantly tempting you and playing with the consumer um, in a just very intimate, um, very arranged environment. And then on top of that, the actual physical experience of that brand, once you actually had the arrival of the product at your home, the unboxing experience with the black box that they chose to make one of their signature pieces, that just made the whole experience feel very elevated um, and very exclusive and, and special. Um, at the same time, it also gave you this great box that looks so good that you could start boxing up your old clothes in your closet and you had the ability to figure out how to start replacing them with your new Net-A-Porter addiction. But it was a brilliant way of basically recognizing that their consumer most likely lived in pretty small spaces. And one barrier to actually purchasing more would be the fact that you have a pretty full closet as it is. And they gave you a way of, of really learning how to, um, you know, trade out the the new for for the older stuff. So, you know, just just elements like that that then could could be adapted into the way we thought of any business challenge that we were facing with a client and how the insights into how your behavior was shifting, how they create designed for this user experience that was so unique um, and so adaptive to the environment could be applied to other businesses that we were serving. The most fundamental thing that I have learned um, through trial and error has been that the alignment of agreement and definition at the top is so very important. And what I mean by that is I think it's really easy to speak in terms of digital transformation. Even just the term of digital and the term of transformation by themselves can take on lots of different meaning depending upon um, the orientation and past experience of the other leaders around the table. And so I think it's really um, fundamentally important to push for strong definition and unified shared meaning in those expressions amongst the leaders that are there. Um, because, for example, you know, we talked earlier today about field of dreams. Um, the field of dreams at Westfield Corp is based on um, if we build it, they will literally come. It's about brick and mortar. It's about architecture. It's about design. 
Um, it's not necessarily about experience, digital experience. Um, that's not necessarily where the default thinking goes first. So huge transformation in the minds of many leaders there could mean huge billion dollar, dollar investments in the actual brick and mortar architecture. Um, so I think that's where, too, it, you could think that people are being progressive and are in a shared mindset, when in actuality, it still means different things to different people. And so I think for it to trickle down and cascade into an organization um, in, a, in a way that is really going to create a uh, groundswell and galvanize people and be institutionalized, it has to be shared and understood at the very top. And then the elements of it, like how does the process play out, is really important in terms of pace. You know, we might all agree that digital transformation has to take place, but we might have different timetables for what we think is the right way for that to take place in a company. So some people might come from a background, like I did, where it's really about you have to push and make, put people in their uncomfort zone pretty quickly, and there's going to be that kind of you have to go through the pain for a while before you get to the, the period of time where there's sort of assimilation. Others might feel like um, based on heritage and legacy and history, it needs to be much more sort of modulated and moderated. So. Um, those are the kinds of things that I think are really important to um, establish. I think it's one of the harder roles in the C-suite, although obviously they're all very challenged today. Um, I think when we used to think of a CMO role, it probably had a little bit more of a balance focused on comms as well as marketing. So it was sort of like um, a, a communications role that um, also dealt with marketing in the company. Now I think it's much more about MarTech than MarCom. And so this bl um, blending and sort of um, bleeding, if you will, into the CIO digital arena, um, really understanding user experience design is fundamental to the CMO role today. And I think that the more that the balance of communications and marketing takes place in the digital space, um, and leverages technology as its, its kind of core of its architecture from ad tech to um, platforms and partnerships and, and so forth, I think more and more that marketing person needs to be absolutely um, fluent at digital and technology. And it's not about just pure partnership with this chief digital officer and the CIO, which obviously have to be your best friends in the organization now. But it, it definitely um, is much more of a, a, f a fluent language for the, the marketing person as well. One of my favorite expressions professionally is um, ABL, always be learning. And so I think if you come into the workforce at any generation now and, you're, and you really subscribe to the notion of it's about always be learning, uh, it, fundamentals are really important. It is, it's really critical that there's that sense of fundamentals are, are still present and is about the connection to those in new, innovative, um, more entrepreneurial ways of thinking that I think is um, sort of the sweet spot. And so I think that constantly curious mind, the desire to be on the edge, and like I said, to be playing yourself, to be downloading new apps, to be when you see something, save it for another time and go back and really um, actually play with it yourself, um, use it yourself, I think are kind of key to really going beyond just sort of knowledge learning of something to actually doing and activating around it and having a, a, a more interpretive mind that allows you to truly create the right application for something. Because not everything is actually going to be relevant. You know, there are, are many things that are going to be out there that we're going to constantly be hearing about that um, may not actually be the things that are going to move in, and um, evolve your business. And I think at the, at the C level, it's really important, especially as a CMO, to sort of know the difference and to make and place those bets because you're bringing your entire team along on that journey. And so it's, that's one of the reasons why it's always great to have those people, too, that are really um, on the edges of constantly also getting a sense of what is coming down the pike and sort of really out ahead to um, start to get a, a little bit ahead of the learning curve. We're talking customer, and I think that um, some of it is the point of also putting yourself into the kind of user position is to get closer to the customer yourself and to realize as a professional that you are also oftentimes a customer of either your products or your services or your company. Um, and I think the more you are being able to personalize it, the easier it starts to be to understand the customer. 
Um, but it is very interesting to take companies on that kind of customer-centric view, especially companies who have had a legacy of being much more business-to-business -business oriented. And so really helping them understand the set of questions, this, the point of view shifts, the mindset shifts that have to take place to start to get so empathetic and so maniacally focused on our customer behavior and what they're doing, uh, and making a true day-to-day -day study of understanding that that also is a, a point in time. Like that customer now is, um, like Moore's law in technology, is also changing at this pace and this rate that is we've never really seen before because it, it's now customer driving the the shifts that we're seeing because of the technology in their hands. And that's why I think the mobile piece that we hear, mobile centricity, is so also fundamental and core to this because it's been the mobile device that I think has really created that rapid pace of change and has been the adoption, has been the biggest tool that has shifted how we orient ourselves in our lives. And it, it, I like to think of it as that remote control of our life. It is a true extension of our being. And um, I think every company, every position in the company has to make it sort of both art and science and really starting to respect and understand um, what that means on a, on a frequent, regular basis. Um, the last thing I'll say on that front is um, many companies I've worked with in my time have always said, well, we're customer centric, but then they say, and get our customer to love and appreciate us more. And I always, that is such a great telling statement because in the nature of the way that is phrased, there's nothing customer centric about it. Being customer centric is about making somebody feel like you care about them, <laughs> that you are doing what you're doing because of them um, and the relationship they have to you. Um, so I think that's the other thing that it's just like, you know, even in language, you can hear the um, fundamental shift that still has to take place with many companies, that it's not about you anymore. It is about the person on that other seat and that person on the other side of the equation.